Hi everybody, it's Bohuslav again, your music director of your orchestra, the El Paso Symphony. I'm coming to you live from my studio here in Santa Teresa. I hope you have been enjoying The Beat Goes On, a little representation of what our musicians sound separately, not just in an orchestra, but also when they play their solos. Anyway, uh, the next player who will play for you is Cara Luffy, our principal bassoon. And I guess I got asked to introduce her because there is a connection. I used to play the bassoon. Believe it or not, yes, I did. For many, many years, I have sat in the orchestra and played just like Cara. Maybe I wasn't as good as she is, but I was pretty good, decent bassoon player. Anyway, just kidding. We, were, we are all very good players. And uh, she's going to play something uh, rather cool for you. Um, well, you know... Uh, it's the time. I, I used to play a lot, but uh, when I got into conducting, I found out that uh, combining time-wise, practicing bassoon, which takes a long time to practice and to get to a professional level, or studying scores uh, was one or the other. And since I, you know, kind of wanted to conduct, uh, bassoon went into the corner and it's been there since. So, um, Another reason was making reads. Oh my goodness, that was something. Spent so much time making reads for the instrument. Uh, but you know, you have to have a really good read to be able to sound good. Anyway, here's Kara. She's gonna play something cool. And I'm hoping to see you all at the plaza soon. We are gonna be opening our 90th anniversary concert in September. We have a fundraiser, huge gala. Oh, I'm all of it in front of us. I hope to see you there. And uh, in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you downtown. Hello, EPSO friends. It's your principal bassoonist, Kara. And I'm here today in my home studio, and I wanted to give you a few insights into what it takes to play the bassoon. So the bassoon is a double reed instrument, which means that we are dependent on two pieces of cane that are tied together. Cane is just wood. Um, to make our sound. And most bassoonists make their own reeds and this allows us to craft a sound and a tool that works exactly the way we want it to. So this is both a gift and a struggle. So I spend about 50% of my practice time working on my reeds and the other 50% actually playing my instrument. So this is a unique challenge for double reed instruments of which the oboe is also a member of that family. So I start a couple steps in with something called gouge shaped and profiled cane. So it's basically turning what you would imagine a piece of bamboo to look like into this. And then from here, we fold this one piece in half and right here, this part becomes our tip. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. So I fold this guy in half, and then we make the end circular. And then this is what fits on our vocal, which is that curvy metal piece of the bassoon right here. So the reed fits on and allows us to make sound. Because without this little piece, this little noisemaker, my bassoon wouldn't do anything at all. So in the best of times, you probably sit in the audience and we are on the stage and we get to do our favorite thing in the world, which is communicate with you through music. But since we are in circumstances that are not allowing that right now, musicians around the world are really doing what they would do on the daily anyway, which is to practice our instruments. So what I thought I would do today would be to play for you an etude, which is a study that is written for solo bassoon. And this particular one is very melodic. And that's really what I love about the bassoon is it has such a beautiful tenor singing voice. So I'm going to play a little bit of this melodic etude for you.
Bye for now. Hope to see you soon at the symphony.